I'm going to do another example of the uh, washer method. This is actually a homework problem, so it's from page 433. Well, I think it's actually on 434. I'm going to do number 9. Okay, on number 9, so we have several curves here that we're working with. So we have the curve y equals 1 over square root of x. That's one curve. Then we have the line y equals 0, which is the x-axis. Then we have the line x equals 1. That's a vertical line that goes through where x is 1. And then we have another vertical line where x is 5. So I have four curves there. When you graph all four, four of those, they're going to form an area. And then we're rotating that area around the x-axis again. Okay. If you're going around the x-axis and you're using the disk or washer method, then you want all your variables in terms of x's. Same axis, same variables. All right, again, never, ever, ever attempt to do a problem without graphing it. So you're going to use your graphing calculator, whatever you got. Graph this goofy thing. And the graph of 1 over the square root of x, I can't do it very well. But it looks sort of like that. So it's kind of making an L shape. It's slowly approaching the x and y axis, but those serve as asymptotes, so they'll never touch it. All right, so that's y equals 1 over the square root of x. Um, y equals 0. It's important that you know when you see it that that's the x-axis. And then we have x equals 1, which is right about here, and x equals 5, somewhere over here. Okay, so find the area where those four curves have enclosed, and that's what I'm coloring right here in blue. So I have that little blue sp space right there. I'm rotating that blue space around the x-axis. And I want to know what's the volume. So this volume, it's going to be a little bit easier to do. Again, we don't have a washer, so I'm going to have to get a washer one next. So uh, there is no inside circle. Technically, the inside curve, so the outside or top curve would be the 1 over uh, square root of x. The bottom curve would be y equals 0. And when you plug that in for radius, you get 0. So we only have one. Um, curve that we're working with. And again, they gave us our boundaries here because we have those two lines. We know that we're going from 1 to 5. So we don't have to find our boundaries on this one. So it's the area of the outside or top circle, which is 1 over the square root of x. And then don't forget, it's radius, so you have to square it. Pi r squared. Pull pi out. Let's see, 5 on top, 1 on bottom. And when you square 1 over the square root of x, you get just 1 over x. We'll do a scoot here. Okay, so I have pi, the integral of 5 from 1 to 5 of 1 over x. Remember, when you have um, no variables on top and an x to the first on the bottom, that's natural log. Okay, so the, the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log of x, so we're done with that. We've got our boundaries of 5 and 1. So we plug those in. We get the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 1. Okay, in, in class we kind of mentioned this is a fact you're going to have to really get used to and memorize because it's going to come up a lot. The natural log of 1 is a value you can figure out without a calculator and should. Remember, natural log is log base e. So it's asking you for the log base e of 1. If you remember from pre-cal, logs are exponents. So this one is saying, what's the exponent? It's, it wants to know, or it's, it's talking about the exponent that goes with e so that you get 1 for an answer. And the, anything to the 0 power is how you end up with 1. So natural log of 1 is 0. Okay, So you would never write your answer like natural log of 5 minus natural log of 1 because you should know that the natural log of 1 is 0. So you end up with natural log of 5. So don't forget we have pi. Don't forget the pi there. So it's pi, natural log of 5. Um, I think it's great to leave it like that. Your book sometimes will also give the decimal approximation of the natural log of 5. But um, I think it's best to just leave it like that.